Let us praise our God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate third Sunday of Easter. In today's gospel, we read and reflect about disciples' journey to Emmaus, where we see the risen Lord walks with them, he listens to them, and responds to their doubts and clarifications. The same Jesus walks with us, especially in our trials, in our trying times. Let us now turn to him and seek his mercy and forgiveness as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the living Word of God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, 
we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you, staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man condemned to you by God. Mighty deeds, commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand shall I not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exulted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke to the resurrection of the Christ that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this, we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response will be, Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, Lord you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you. O oh Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, Lord you will, will show us the, the path of life. life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the, in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him and my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Lord. Lord you will not show us the path of life. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path to life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, Lord you will show us the path of life. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, 
If you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, this it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet, prophet spoke! 
Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had play, taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We know many people's lives were cut short, many lost their loved ones, and numerous people lost their jobs and savings during this pandemic. I have seen people asking this question in social media. Where is your God during this pandemic? Alice Wiesel was a writer and a Nobel Prize winner who had a terrible time in Nazi concentration camps. In his autobiography called The Night, he describes a heartbreaking incident that occurred in the Auschwitz camp. There was a boy in this camp who was dear to everyone, and he looked like an angel, but his face was covered with the sadness. However, he was a, such a lovely boy. And one evening, after work, everyone came back to the camp, and they saw that three lynchers were prepa being prepared for execution. And it was evident that at least three victims were going to be hanged that evening. And everybody gathered around these three lynches. Then they saw three victims were brought, and among the three, two were adults and one boy. They were so sad to see this boy. And they started asking and blaming God. They said, God can't even spare this innocent boy, and where is he God now? And as the three of them brought closer to the lynch, and the two adults shouted loudly, Long live freedom. However, the boy was silent. And Ellis describes that the body language of the executioner suggested that even he was also hesitant to execute this adorable and innocent boy. Then three victims' uh, face were covered with black cloth and their heads were placed on the lynch and the cord was pulled. 
The two adults died instantly. But the boy was struggling and fighting for his life for the next half hour. It was so heartbreaking, and the crowd began to scream so loudly. And a question was asked again, where is God, and why can't he even save this angelic-looking boy? At this, Elise heard a whisper in his heart. It is God who is dying in that lynch. God is suffering with us in our suffering. And he is not far away in our trials. God is present in our suffering and he shares in our pain. Jesus underwent terrible suffering and crucifixion, and thus he overcame suffering. So he understands our pain and sorrow, and he is close to us in our suffering. Today in the Gospel, we listen to Jesus' disciples' journey to Emmaus. And two of his disciples decided to travel to Emmaus three days after Jesus' death. Emmaus was seven miles away from Jerusalem. They were so sad and downcast and had lost their hope in Jesus. Now, Jesus joins in their journey like a traveler. And they had a great conversation. He listened to them, what they were saying, and responding to their doubts, and was explaining to them the word of God. Then in the evening, they invited him to the supper, at the, and at the table, at the breaking of the bread, they recognized it was the risen Jesus who was walking with them, who was explaining to them. And now seeing this risen Lord, and renewing their hope in the, in the Lord, they returned to, return to Jerusalem to share this news with the rest of the disciples. Even though we may never have been to the Holy Land, all of us have been to the, on the road to Emmaus. Some people are very familiar with that road. It represents the road to disappointment failure, sorrow, grief, and shattered dreams. Perhaps some of you or a member of your family may be on their way to Emmaus, struggling with their trust and faith in the Lord. The reason could be you may have been diagnosed with a serious illness, or you may have been pained by the family problems, such as your son or daughter, has issue with abuse of drugs or alcohol or messed with their lives or your marriage is going through a tough time. You have lost your job and don't know how to support your family and pay the bills or your best friend betrayed you or you may be going through the crisis in faith or you may be tired of addictions or you may be upset with the things that is going on in the world and around us. When people go through darkness of sadness and sorrow, some people fail to recognize that the risen Lord is walking with them and talking to them. He is so close to us to help us through it as he helped the disciples who went through to Emmaus. So may this story, Disciples' Journey to Emmaus, an inspiration for us as we go through the dark side of our life's journey, such as our fear, our anxiety, our sickness, our failures, our sorrow, or shattered dreams, or disappointments, especially at this pandemic. Our struggles and sufferings may be meaningful when we look up to Christ life story. That is his own suffering and death. Last week, we celebrated 
the feast of the divine mercy. And when you notice the picture of the divine mercy, and you will see at the below of that picture, you see wordings that, Lord, I trust in you. We always trust in God, especially as we're going through the hard times and difficult times. We need to say again and again, Lord, I trust in you. Lord, I trust in you. Lord, I trust in you. Let us now profess our faith in one God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, true God. The God not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We trust that God will never abandon us. Therefore, we address God with our needs and the needs of all people. The church leaders everywhere will walk with all who search for the living God offering Christ peace and reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who lead the nations of the world will walk in the ways of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For farmers and farm workers who plant the seeds and tend the seedlings that will grow and bear fruit that will nourish and delight us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer the consequences of the current pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to all the victims who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will know the healing power of the risen Christ. And for all the prayer intentions listed in the book in the vestibule of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have died will soon be welcomed into the peaceful pastures to the kingdom of heaven. Especially Kevin Malloy, nephew to Father John Dietrich and cousin to Bill Dietrich. George Krause, father of Steve Krause. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the intentions recommended to our parish, in particular those of this Mass, Francis Philbert, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. O oh God of goodness and peace, hear our prayer as we seek his presence 
in those who suffer. Ease their pain and strengthen them. We ask this in his name, the risen one, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become our bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. The mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the gift of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The washman can cleanse me from my sin. Let us pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given their cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our, has, our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with the paschal joy, every land, every people, exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and endeared willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of a charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Archbishop, all the clergy, religious, and the faithful. Let us also remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Martha, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now all together say the Lord's Prayer in love and faith. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other this sign of peace. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of the Almighty God be with you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah.